Well, Coach, uh, number one preseason ranking, how much emphasis do you put on that? We don't put any emphasis on it, uh, to be perfectly honest, and I'm that's uh, not leading anyway, but, but but we are honored to be that. I mean, we to say that we're not happy to be picked number one, uh, we are happy to be picked number one, and um, I, I think it's... Uh, it goes a lot of credit to the players that have put in a lot of hard work and not only some of it's because of our history so the players that have left our program get credit for that picking as well but uh, also the ones that return but um, it's nice but now we've got to go and prove ourselves and uh, uh, you know it gives us a chip on the shoulder for all the other teams to try and knock us off and and we know that and we're going to be ready to defend and we'll, we'll do our best. You're back in the building where your season came to an end a year ago. How bittersweet is that memory, and does that stick with some of the players going forward into this year? I, th I think the loss itself uh, sticks with you. I, I, that particular was, loss was not bitter to me. I, I thought we played very, very well. Um, uh, we outshot uh, Air Force in that game 40-23, but we didn't score a goal. We lose one nothing. our goaltending, our everything I thought played very well, so I left that game not discouraged saying geez i wish this i wish that i mean i wish we won the game in general but the way we played i thought we played very well now having said that the game we won before that against uconn i did not think we played very well but we won the game so i was more upset with that particular game i guess uh when the weekend was over than the one that uh we were hoping to move forward with but uh, upset that we lost yes uh bitter no and uh you know i if, if we had to say could you do that game over again. I, I wouldn't play it much differently. I would just be hopeful that we got some more bounces and we scored some goals. And, and he talked about Jacques Lamoureux. He, he scored the goals that they needed to, to advance and we didn't, uh, but we played very well. You look at this conference and, and everyone talks about how it's getting better and better each year. At your press conference last year uh, at the final game, you talked about how this conference still needs to earn more respect uh, on a national level. Do you think it's getting there, or is there a lot more work to be done? Well, there's there's a lot of work to be done, but it, every year it is getting better. And uh, it may be hard for a lot of outsiders to see that, but uh, uh, particularly when they, teams come in our building, you've always beat that team. How could you lose to them, so to speak? Uh, anyone can beat anyone in our league, and, it, and we know that uh, the team that may be uh, is in last place that we lose to, they're going to knock off other people along the way too, so we're not going to be the, the only one uh, that. But uh, I, I, I look at our league as on, on, on uh, how we're making ground on, how we're perceived by other leagues, other opponents. Uh, I know from our own program, the calls that I get now for teams wanting to play us, the Michigans, the North Dakotas, uh, we've got some big programs now calling us and, and instead of me begging to play them. And I think that uh, tells you where we're at as a program. And then when I look around the other league and seeing who they're playing and, and getting home games and things like that, I think that also tells me that. And I think getting home games and, and playing in big environments like we do at our Brick City homecoming game is only going to benefit our program, our league, uh, where um, you know a lot of we're having a lot of positive offshoots because of that success. And uh, you know whether it be Kristen have playing in the Stanley Cups or five guys attending uh, NHL camps uh, this year. I think those are all offshoots of success in the past and what have a lot of guys in the, the history of our program, the hard work that they put into it. You always uh, talk about how difficult it is to get to March and, and in this building. The regular season schedule in Atlantic Hockey is, is always tough, but that non-conference schedule you touched on a little bit is even tougher this year with the Wisconsin's RPIs, unions coming in. Talk about that and the importance of scheduling the, that quality of a team. Well, I think you, you, you want to schedule, first of all, good opponents, opponents that your fans will enjoy watching or, or following you play. Uh, but, you know, I think you've got to get teams. I think sometimes you've got to uh, over schedule, so to speak, where you're playing teams that uh, are, quite frankly, very good and, and, and maybe should win the games just to expose what we need to work on. I mean, if everything's going rosy, uh, hey, you've won this many games and you get in the playoff and you could get surprised. You could see a, find a weakness when it's too late. So you're, you're trying to schedule teams that uh, are, are great for our fans, uh, great uh, for our team, and and, uh, and just to see where we are as a program as we evaluate ourselves. I, I alluded to Air Force. You know, when we win or lose against Air Force, it's a good gauge of where you're at so the earlier you play them you can say hey we're on track you, know, you may be feeling hey we've got a young team i'm not sure where we stand you play air force if you win that game you go we're on track or if you lose that game and and uh and it's you know, one sided you say hey we've got some work to do if we're going to win this league so they're a good gauge for us to see where we're at and uh, and then that's how we look at our non-conference games as well 
you mentioned uh, you lose some key pieces, but you really like, especially your defensemen, you know them all, they're all coming back. You, you really like this year's squad. I, I really do. Uh, and like I said, it's only on paper and uh, I really like it, but uh, I'm very optimistic about it. But, you know, so many different things can happen during the, the course of the year. And, 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 and every year we're talking about, geez, you lose this guy, how are you going to survive? You know, you lose Jocelyn Guimau, who's going to, Louis Menard, and then Jared DeMichael, who's going to, re oh, and then Shane Matalora. So if you're going to be good, you better be losing good players. You're not good because you're, you've got poor players. So every year we know we're going to lose good players, and, and it's our job to try and replace them. And the, the, the thing that you can never figure out until you start playing is chemistry and how you deal with uh, not only your teammates, but how you deal with adversity and the, the different things that come up during the course of the year. So that's what we're going to gauge. And once you start playing games, you get a better feel for your team. And by, by the end of the year, when you think you've got it all figured out, the season uh, comes to an end. And you say, geez, I just figured out our, our team. And, and then you're looking at the next year. So, uh, But we're excited about the, this coming class and year.